Hello, welcome to this video where we look at vector functions. I like to call them space curves. And so we have as an input a, a single real variable t and the output is a vector. Think of t as like a time parameter. And in each component you have a function of t f of t in the i component, g of t in the j component, h of t in the k component. The uh, r of t is the name of the position curve. You give me a time t, I'll be traveling through space along this curve, and at that time t I'll be stopped at a point. The vector r of that t points from the origin to the point where you're at, at your current position in space along the curve. Okay, these guys are called component functions, and our job is to look at the calculus of a vector function by looking at the calculus of the individual guys. All right, first up is to look at uh, some common vector functions. What we have here is cosine t as the function f of t, and sine t as the function g of t, and t as the function h of t. So sine and cosine with x and y, that's circular, but t is going to be increasing or maybe even decreasing. So the height off the xy plane is going to be moving. It's called a circular helix. Okay. Um, let me go to a drawing here, uh, 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 animation. Uh, static drawing doesn't do it, do it justice. Here it is, t is negative, t is zero. Uh, I have this going at a double speed. That's the 2t that you see there. But yeah, it makes a circle of radius 3 and travels along that back and forth, up and down for t. All right, circular helix. Great. Then we have a trefoil knot next. So... It looks a lot like what we have here. There's a cosine t, there's a sine t, but there's this parenthesis that's multiplied in front of the cosine t and sine t, and it causes a very different action to happen along the curve. Uh, please ignore these websites. They, you know, they, uh, they haven't been updated, so they don't seem to work. But we have a um, visual of this one as well. Let's go to this tab. It knots inside of itself. Uh-oh. Okay, there we go. I can turn it. You can see it. It's pretty neat. Um, notice that the speed at which the arrow is moving increases around certain parts. Sort of like a roller coaster there. The speed isn't constant, but with that circular helix, the speed never really changed. The speed was constant. Pretty cool. Trefoil knot. The overview there, and then the side view. All right, great. So next up, what are we going to do with these functions? Well, in calculus, we do limits, we do derivatives, and we do integrals. And so let's take the limit first. So time, you're traveling through time along the curve, and you're worried about what happens as t goes to a certain value. Well, the limit is going to be component-wise. Limit in i, limit in the j function, limit in the k function. Three little calc 1 problems. So let's go back to remember calc 1, a, b, calculus. The limit as t goes to 0 on this position function is going to lead us to three different limits. Limit of sine t over t as t goes to 0. And you can either do this by L'Hopital, I have 0 over 0, or you could uh, recognize this as a famous limit that you actually had to prove with squeeze theory before you knew L'Hopital, but, uh, but that limit is definitely 1. Uh, but the others, there's no, nothing to stop you from plugging in zero. You couldn't plug in t equals zero on the previous one. But when you plug in t equals zero on the next one, of course, that's just e to the zero, which is one. Natural log of one, which is zero. And so as time goes to zero, you're traveling along whatever curve this is, and you're headed to the point one, one, zero. That's, that's um, out at the point one, one in the xy plane. Okay. Limit, uh, limit component-wise. Derivative component wise but this holds so much more weight this is the actual velocity vector how the position vector is changing over time is the velocity vector so it comes off tangent to the curve 
we'll talk about it later, but that's exactly what this is. But it's component wise. We want to find the velocity vector. We'll have to take the arc sine's derivative. 1 over the square root of 1 minus t squared. We want the velocity vector. We're going to have to take the root of 1 minus t squared's derivative. 1 over 2, or 1 half, that guy to the negative 1 half. Derivative of the inside, don't forget that, negative 2t. And then we have um, natural log of any function has 1 over that function as its derivative, but then chain rule multiplied by the derivative of that function. As far as simplifying this, the, the 1 minus t squared in the j component is in the denominator with the square root, just like it is with the first component. The negative 2's cancel out. And this is your position. Uh, this is your velocity vector. You had your position vector. And now we have our velocity vector. Um, it's only true for certain t's, just like the function was only allowed to be used for certain t's. Uh, we didn't look at the domain, but we could. What t's are you allowed to use? What are your input? parameter values max and min okay and so then uh, next up after taking the derivative what do you think we're gonna do we're gonna take the integral so this is if you have like an acceleration vector you want to integrate it you get a velocity vector or a velocity vector you want to integrate it you get a position vector just component wise so we integrate f integrate g and integrate h component wise all right so here's our example t squared for the f and and t root t minus one for the g and t sine of pi t for the k all right well integrate t squared t cubed over three plus a constant how about integrate t rad t minus one that's some they got to do some nifty use of there Usually the degree inside is one more than the degree outside. That's perfect for use of, if that was a t squared minus one, that would be great, but it's not. When the degree outside equals degree inside, you actually still can do u sub. Still let two u be t minus one, then that becomes a rad u, and du is just dt, but you still have that t on the outside, and you can just go to what you're um, using as your substitution to solve for it, the fact that t is u plus one. So your outside is u plus 1. You become the rad u, du, and you can distribute. u rad u is u to the 3 halves, and then plus rad u. So add 1, u to the 5 halves with 2 fifths. Add 1, u to the 3 halves with 2 thirds, plus a constant. Let's use that c1, c2 for the constant. Replace the u's, though. you got to have it back in terms of t's. u is equal to t minus 1. Well, we're two-thirds of the way done. Here we have to, oh, sorry, the animation's out of order. We have to integrate the third component, and that's going to require integration by parts. Or you could do the shortcut. Let's do it just, it's only one time through. Let u be equal to t, then du is sine pi t, dv, sorry. Then you do uh, du, who is the derivative of dt, uh, uh, derivative of u, and then v, who is the integral of dv. Um, what function has sine of pi t as its derivative? negative 1 over pi cosine pi t. Then the formula uv minus the integral v du, integration by parts, and we have it. Negative t over pi cosine pi t minus the integral of negative 1 over pi cosine pi t, and that double minus becomes a plus. And then you're back to an integral that you pretty much have already done. What function has cosine pi t as its derivative? 1 over pi sine pi t. Plus another constant, C3. So if you had a velocity vector, now you have in hand its integral, which is going to be a position vector. Or if you have an acceleration vector, you have in hand its integral, which is going to be a velocity vector. And we have the three different parts. And what you could do is break apart the constant, make it C1, C2, and C3. All right, great. So let's go ahead and end this video. It's gotten kind of long. And in the next video, we'll look at some properties, maybe some, some, um, some concepts about the velocity, and then we'll uh, launch into projectile motion. Launch, literally. My name is Nakai Remmer. Thanks for watching this video. Please like and subscribe. Comment down below. Reach out to me if you have questions. I'm just here to help you through this, this Calc 2 journey, multivariable calculus. And I will see you in the next video.